Welcome to Ferris Provincial Park. We're staying here for two nights and I'm gonna give you a tour and review of this provincial park and also show you some things that you can do in the area. Ferris Provincial Park is located in Campbellford, Ontario, about three hours northeast of Toronto and an hour and a half northwest of Kingston. It is situated on the banks of the Trent River on the Trent Severn Waterway between locks 10 and 13. There are a total of 163 sites in two campgrounds, Bedrock and Valley View. Bedrock Campground has 20 electric and 88 non-electric sites, and Valley View has 20 electric and 35 non-electric sites. We found the drive to the park to be very scenic, and it was only about an hour and a half away for us. There are a few spots in front of the park office and store to park your trailers and vehicles while you checked in. Prices for sites and day use were posted clearly on the sign outside, and inside there were some souvenirs, clothing, and camping essentials there for purchase. You could also pay for ice and firewood here as well. As always, our first stop is filling up the trailer with water and we did come through the dump station here. So it is a circle. You pull in off the road, you turn left into the dump station and you go around the loop. The first stop is the actual dump station. And then if you come all the way around here is where you will find the water. There's no threads on the uh, filling station here so you can't use a water filter. And to do a quick pressure check, there's a lot of pressure. I'll turn it on when you're ready. I think you're gonna have to hold it. All right. Kind of looks like the handle has seen better days. Yeah. We booked the Bedrock Campground and had Site 68. It was perfect for our small trailer and even larger trailers could fit, although it was slightly uneven. We parked our truck across the front to make it more closed off from the road. If you tuned into my video from last week where we were camping at Lake St. Peter, you would have seen that we had a problem with our stairs to get into our trailer. They were not long enough and we had to use some firewood to prop them up because of the steep slope. But I'm Pleased to say that since then we have downgraded our stairs to the fold out steps. Even just loading and unloading the trailer has been so much easier because the big bulky stairs aren't right in the doorway that have to pull out and we don't have to fiddle with the legs. We got all set up and now it's time for a park tour. This is the first of two comfort stations in the Bedrock campsites and it is just flush toilets here. They seem clean enough, but they're also kind of smelly. On the bulletin board in front of these comfort stations, it actually says that the comfort station near site 91 of the Bedrock Campground is closed indefinitely for sewer line repairs. We're on our way there to check it out, but otherwise the only other showers in the park would be in the Valley View Campground. We made our way around the Bedrock Campground to check out some of the other sites, and some of them were extremely hilly and sloped. Definitely check out the extra notes about the sites when you're booking, if you have a trailer you're bringing with you. It has been confirmed the second comfort station in the Bedrock Campground area is closed. So just know that if you're booking Ferris, and you wanna be near washrooms, you wanna be near the closer ones at the front of this campground area or in Valley View. The Bedrock Campground led us to the stone walls of Ferris. One of the special features of Ferris Park is a network of old stone walls that crisscross the landscape. These stone walls were built between 1873 and 1892 by a Scottish caretaker who worked for James Marshall Ferris first. And by the stone wall is where you can also find the playground at this park. If bird watching is your thing, you can stop by the Chimney Swift nesting structure to try and get some glimpses of these little birds flying in and out.
We are at the boat launch area here and you can launch boats here at Ferris. You can also launch your canoes, kayaks or paddle boards as well, but they don't recommend swimming in the Trent River because the currents are very strong and unpredictable. You can rent kayaks at the park store and pick them up down here at the boat launch area. It's $20 for an hour, $30 for two hours, and $40 for a half day on a single kayak. And it's more expensive if you wanna rent the doubles. Either way, per kayak, it is a $100 security deposit that you get back once you return the kayak. If you come down to the boat launch area, you can actually get on the Meadow Loop Trail, which is a beautiful trail right along the river edge. So it offers beautiful scenery. The trail is also very well groomed, but it is a little bit uneven and rocky in areas. The garbage and recycling area is on the way out of the Bedrock Campground and has spots to recycle small propane cylinders as well. Now on to the Valley View Campground. Here you can see the vault toilets in two locations. There are also two spots for vault toilets in Bedrock, but I just forgot to film them. I'm at the Comfort Station in the Valley View Campground here and it does have showers. However, there is only one shower in the women's washroom and there are three toilet stalls. There is also another garbage and recycling center as you exit the Valley View Campground area. We've left the park and we are out exploring in the town of Campbellford. And one thing I really wanted to highlight is the poor internet connection. So at the park, there's like zero internet available. And even out in the surrounding area, it's pretty bad too. We didn't get any internet until we got into Campbellford. And you may say, oh, you don't need internet for when you're camping. But we use it for directions and for maps and things like that. So if you're coming here and relying on internet, don't. While it's not recommended to go swimming at Ferris Provincial Park because of the currents in the water, there are nearby pools that you can go to and the hours are posted at the park store. Our first stop outside of Ferris Provincial Park is Church Key Brewing Company. It's not too far down the road and it looks like a picturesque little spot to get some craft beers. So Church Key does offer flights. However, they only had two beers on tap today. So we got them both to give them a try and can confirm they are both 10 out of 10 delicious. Another interesting thing about this brewery is all of the merch that they have inside. They have glassware, hats, shirts, and they also sell cheese from Empire Cheese and cheese curds. Another thing to do in the area is come to the Trent Severn Waterway Lock. We are at Crow Bay Lock number 14, and it is quite impressive because the height that the locks go down is so far. I'm crossing over the lock right now, and it is very high. It's actually kind of scary that they let you do this because you could easily fall in if you were not following the rules. This is the top end and there's a big drop down all the way down to the bottom. And this also seems like it's a pretty popular spot for fishing. There are a few people down here just behind me fishing and even at the top of the lock fishing as well. Our last stop was Belmont Lake Brewery located about 30 minutes away, but totally worth the drive. They had three beers on tap and it was 350 per pint. They even had the friendliest pup who liked to visit with the guests. All right, we're here at Belmont Brewery and it is a very, very secluded place. Hard to find uh, one way in and one way out to get here. And I'm not gonna lie, it was a little sketchy coming in here because it was such a narrow road and only one way. So if you are the smaller car, you're the one who has to stop and back up so that the bigger car can pass. It's right on the water, very secluded, and there's so many people here. I also have to add, it only costs $7 for two pints. If that's not a deal, I don't know what is. 
The owners of the brewery moved here from the UK and started this brewery on their property to make traditional English beer with a Canadian twist. So this is probably the coolest brewery we've ever been to because you can arrive here by boat. They have a dock set up so you can park your boat here and then walk up the trail to get a beer. Whether you're coming here by car or by boat, this is definitely somewhere we would recommend stopping if you're in the area. If you're into hiking, Ferris might be the park for you because they have about 11 kilometers of trails to explore, ranging from easy to moderate in difficulty. And mountain biking is even permitted around the outside loop of the Drumlin Trail. We're back at the park and we decided we would start off with some hiking. We are on the Rani Falls Trail. It is a one kilometer loop and it takes you by Rani Falls. This was a fairly easy trail and although there was signage everywhere not to swim in the river or at the falls, there were quite a few people down there swimming. And I'm not gonna lie, it looked really refreshing. We made it to the suspension bridge after getting lost a couple of times but it's definitely worth it to get the views of the river below. Now it's time for my overall thoughts of Ferris Provincial Park. Let's start with the positive aspects. This park has five hiking trails with a total of almost 11 kilometers of trails to explore, and they offer great views of the Trent River and the Drumlands, which were formed thousands of years ago by glaciers. I also really liked that this park was conveniently located to Campbellford, so you could leave the park and explore the amenities nearby, and there were tons of things to see and do in the area. Now let's talk about the negative aspects of this park. There's no real place to swim here. They discourage swimming in the Trent River because of the strong current. So if you do want to go swimming, you can go into the town and they do have a few pools that you're able to use. The hours are posted at the park store. Another thing I didn't like was that we had some power issues while we were there. We weren't getting enough power to our trailer to use our surge protector. And I think it was because everyone was running their air conditioners and fans to combat the 40 degree weather. This meant our AC, fridge, and other electronics kept turning off. And the last thing I didn't really like were the comfort stations. They seemed like they were in major need of a refresh and one of the comfort stations in the Bedrock Campground was under construction indefinitely to repair the sewer lines. That meant that there are only two showers available in the Valley View Campground one for men and one for women, which doesn't seem like a lot to service this entire campground. Overall, we had a really great time at this park and would return in the future to do more of these trails because it was way too hot this weekend to really explore. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing around Ferris Provincial Park and that this video can be helpful if you're planning a trip here in the near future. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more camping and travel videos coming soon.